If you were thinking of culturing isopods, you probably already know that they are cultured both as vivarium janitors and as supplemental food for herps, such as dart frogs and geckos, as well as for invertebrates. The basic care requirements for all terrestrial species are essentially the same, but each species has some specific characteristics. Knowing these characteristics can help you decide which species is best for a specific application. This video will first cover specific information about dwarf striped isopods, and then provide general culture information. As seen here, this species is considerably larger both in terms of length and width than dwarf whites or Costa Rican micropods, but it is still much smaller than the Spanish or giant orange, for example. This makes it a very versatile food item as it is small enough to be suitable for many dart frogs, yet big enough to interest larger species. This species is very prolific, quite possibly the most prolific of all the isopods I have cultured. It is not as commonly kept in the hobby as some of the others, but probably only because it is a more recent addition. This species likes to cling to the underside of dried leaves or pieces of wood, congregating there in large numbers. It seems to eat more wood and other plant material more readily than the other small species of isopod, much like its larger cousin the giant orange isopod. However, it is omnivorous and will eat fish food pellets enthusiastically. General isopod culture information. Supplies. You will need a culture container. A variety of containers will work well, depending on the size of your starter culture. A 16-ounce deli cup is a good size for 20 or fewer individuals. The smaller container will help ensure that the isopods can find food and each other easily. If you start with more isopods initially, or once you have a thriving breeding population of isopods, use a larger container such as this one. An inch or two of coir fiber, also known as coconut fiber, or similar substrate. A top layer of substrate. I like to use non-toxic dry fallen leaves. Optionally, you can also add bark and small pieces of wood. Oak and or maple are suitable for leaves and wood. Take care to avoid leaves and wood that have been exposed to pesticides. Prior to use, all leaves and wood should be baked at 200 Fahrenheit to avoid contamination with pest organisms. Dechlorinated distilled or RO water a calcium source, such as pieces of cuddle bone, a starter culture. Setup. You may choose to ventilate the lid. If you do, it is a good idea to stuff the holes with filter floss or similar material to prevent entry of small flying pests, such as fungus gnats or forid flies. If you prefer, you can leave the lid unventilated as long as you remove the lid daily, or almost daily, to add food and water. This periodic ventilation will provide sufficient fresh air. First, add the base layer of coir fiber to the container. If needed, add water until it is moist, but not soggy. When you squeeze it, some water should come out, but there shouldn't be any standing water on the bottom of the container. Then put in the dry leaves, bark, and wood. Add the cuddle bone. Give the contents of the container a good misting. Add your starter isopods. Maintenance. To maintain the humidity that isopods require, Mist one side of the culture every other day, or more frequently if needed. It is a good idea to keep the other side of the culture slightly drier, as it allows the isopods to self-regulate their moisture needs. Though the isopods will eat the leaves, bark, and wood in the culture, they will also benefit from small amounts of a variety of vegetables and fruit, such as this piece of cooked squash, as well as high-protein foods like fish food pellets. Feed small amounts at first and remove anything that becomes moldy. Replace one half of the substrate about twice per year or as needed. As some isopods will be present in the substrate you remove, you can use the old substrate to seed another culture. Harvesting. Isopods will congregate on pieces of wood, bark, or even cardboard, particularly if they are stacked in layers to provide plenty of crevices. These can then be lifted out and the isopods can be brushed or gently shaken into a waiting container. Add them directly to your vivarium. Some isopods may be eaten immediately, but others will survive and breed in your vivarium. To maintain a healthy population, it is a good idea to add a quantity of isopods from the culture container to the vivarium periodically.